<laughs> All right, if you would turn with me to the book of Daniel, please. The book of Daniel, chapter 6. The book of Daniel, chapter 6. Pastor Matt asked me to speak. The Lord dropped this word in my heart. And sometimes you can go back to a word that you've heard over and over again. And you can be like, wow, why, why are we going here again? I've heard this over and over again. But the Lord will remind us of his word and his truth continuously. And his word will not return void. And you will get to see something new every single time you read his word. One of the songs that Naya was singing says, this is my daily bread. Now, who's going to miss a meal in a day? You know we ain't going to miss a meal. If the table is set, you're going to come to the table, right? So I want to encourage you. The word of God is your daily bread. You should be in the word of God every single day. Well, I'm really busy. So am I. Make time for the word of God to speak and encourage your heart. Let It's real. It's living. So even if you're driving in the car, Naya is a pro at this. She plays the word of God. And she listens to the word of God. I'm not just talking about preaching, which you should. I'm talking about the Bible. When you're driving to and from work, wherever you're going, let the word of God speak and, and refresh you and renew you and encourage you because this is Jesus. The word is Jesus. And I was thinking when Naya was singing, she said, we're talking about hearing the voice of God. And I've heard people say before, I don't know what the voice of God sounds like. Is it audible? Is it this? Is it that? Let me tell you, if you get in the word of God, the spirit of God throughout your day, the Bible says, I will bring back to remembrance my word. So he will speak to you. So you will have discernment. There's multiple voices in this world. You're going to hear the voice of yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not always so great, y'all. Okay? You're going to hear the voice of Satan. You're going to hear the voice of this world, social media, the government, the news, your people that are in opposition against the truth and the word of God. You're going to hear those voices. I'm like, man, I'm schizophrenic. A lot of voices going on here. But you know what? The Lord will override all the darkness with his truth. He will dispel the darkness with his word. But if you don't get in the word of God, you will not know the truth. We will not know who is speaking to us. And let me tell you, people that have been walking with the Lord for a really long time, you could say, I've been through the Bible front and back, side to side. But you know what? His word is, fr you're not going to go in the refrigerator and get a month-old meal and eat it. It's nasty. You're going to get fresh food every single day to carry you throughout your life. So I just want to encourage you this morning because I know that it can get busy. And I say all this to say this. I said, Lord, we have heard this story so many times. And he said, Angela, this is fresh manna every single day. My word still speaks. It still speaks. The word is he will deliver you. He will. It is not a question whether he will or he won't. Do you hear me? He said he will deliver you. Now what we learn from Daniel is that under the pressure he stood fast. And that's where we can falter. So I'm going to read the word, Daniel 6, 20. 
And when he came to the den, this is a den of lions, y'all. And he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spoke and said, oh, Daniel. I want y'all to hear what he says about Daniel. Servant of the living God. Y'all, this is a heathen king. He is saying, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom you, watch these words, servest continually, servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions. Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the mouth of the lions that they may not hurt me. It may not hurt me. It may not hurt my family. It may not hurt my children. It may not hurt my church. It may not hurt my friends. For as much before him, innocency. Look, and we can look at that and be like, he was innocent, so God got him out. No. His heart was pure towards the Lord. So I'm going to go into that, but I love that because he said, was found in me and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel, listen, up and out of the den. (laughs) I got excited when I seen that. I said, I'm coming up. We're coming up. We're coming up out of the den. You're coming up out of the den. First, he's going to shut the mouth of the enemy that has been coming against you. Look, I know if I've been going through it, you've been going through it. Because that's how it works. (laughs) Ask Pastor Matt. When the Lord gives us a message, he said, let me try and test it on them. And then let them deliver it to my people. So let me tell you, he is going to shut the mouth of the lion today. Every obstacle that word Naya's song said it pushes every hindrance out of the way the word of God speaks and when you declare it over your life it will push every obstacle out of your way well I still see it then you keep pushing you keep believing and it says he will take them up and out Then Daniel was taken what? Up and out. He said it, and then he did it. He said, and no matter, no matter of hurt was found upon him. He was not hurt. Check this out. Why? Because he believed his God. He believed his God. Lord, help our unbelief. God, help us when we falter and when we fail. Lord, help our unbelief. And what I want to talk to you about is three different aspects of this story that I've seen. One, the steadfastness of Daniel. Daniel stood the test of time. And he said, Daniel also was one that purposed in his heart. That was one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not eat of the king's delicacies. Daniel committed in his heart that where God goes, I will go. Where What he speaks, I will do. What he says, I will believe. I will commit myself. Listen, if you feel like we've been wavering, I'll say we have been wavering in our faith. Today is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day to recommit our hearts back to the Lord. God, I have purposed in my heart. That doesn't mean you're not going to mess up. So let me set you free now. (laughs) That does not mean you're not going to mess up. That does not mean that you're not going to fail. That does not mean that you're not going to doubt. But when you see that you are turning maybe in an inkling of the wrong direction, you say, Lord, I have committed to you that I am dedicated to you. I have purposed in my heart that no matter where the world goes, I will trust you. I will believe you. I will stand upon your word. 
And then I seen this. They couldn't attack Daniel's character, but they attacked his prayer life. They had nothing they could say about Daniel whatsoever, but they went for his prayer life. How's our prayer life, y'all? How's our prayer life? Because you know what the enemy wants to do? He wants to shut your mouth from praying because when you place your faith in Christ, when you believe him and take him at his word, and you begin to declare the word of God over your life, hell begins to shudder. And the enemy is pushed back. But if the enemy can make you believe that your voice does not matter, that you have gone too far and you cannot commu 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 cannot on his behalf that is your communication line with God and the enemy will try to distort communication between you and your God so he attacked his prayer life oh that we would pray more y'all I don't mean to sound harsh or anything but this whole house should be in that prayer meeting in the morning this whole house God wants to, if you want to see God move in this house here, if I want to see him move in my own home, we need to be praying. And you know what's encouraging about prayer? Pastor Matt prayed things in, I mean, I haven't seen Pastor Matt in like two months. And he was praying things that were in my message in his prayer. And I was like, here we go again. Me and Pastor Matt at it again. And it's encouraging because I haven't seen him for two months. And I'm like, Lord, you hear me. You've been speaking to me. You've been speaking. This is your word. And if you're not there, you miss it. Call has been dropped. So I encourage you. And if it steps on your toes, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Get in prayer. I don't know how to pray. Sit next to someone that knows how to pray and catch what they're praying. Well, I'm embarrassed. I'm scared. I don't, okay, you don't got to be as loud as me. You don't have to be as loud as Pastor Matt. But get in his presence with saints of God that want to breach together and stop the gates of hell from coming against you. I, Brennan had Riley in there, Rayleigh in there. Ray, come on, how old's Rayleigh now? Five. She sat there just like this, with her eyes closed, and then would peek at me. But you know what? She was there in prayer, and she was understanding, oh, this is what we do. Oh, this is what we do. Let me encourage you, bring your children. Oh, well, they're going to be all over the place. Let them run around. Let them, let them run around and let them know what it's like for mommy and daddy to war on their behalf and war on the church's behalf. I'm telling you, it will make an imprint on their hearts and their lives. Look, you think the world is bad now? We're growing up. I mean, when I leave and look at this story and I tell you this story, we're go they're going to grow up in a season and a time that's going to wax worse and worse. And what are they going to have to hold on to? And it's our job to set the stage. It's our job to show them and equip them and show them what to do. Well, I don't have any kids. Well, well, neither do I, really. I have my three now that I just brought in. But when I was serving in ministry all these years, they were all my kids. People would say, I would say, well, they're my kids. And they'd be like, you have kids? Yes, all of them. <laughs> all of them are mine. <laughs> but the, they're looking at you. They're looking at you. They're looking and they're seeing what Shelby going to do. When Kylie's looking at you, what are they going to do when they're facing this? Are they going to worship? Are they going to pray? Are they going to curse their God? Are they going to walk away? What? And look, I don't say all this to beat you down because if we fall, we have grace to get back up and the blood of Jesus. And we need to show them that too because they're going to fall. <laughs> 
and they're going to have to know, wait, my God still loves me. Wait, I see, I can still go to him. Wait, he forgives me. Wait, oh, wait, so wait, that was bad, that was bad. I, I should know that, and this is good. They'll learn from us that too. So don't you ever look in the mirror and let the verdict of condemnation weigh over your head and say that you are guilty because the blood of Jesus says that you are not guilty. You are not guilty. You are not guilty. So get up. Get up out the den. The, the mouths of the lions are already shut. The blood of Jesus has done that for you and I. And sometimes we sit in the den and we say, well, we got comfortable in the den. I got comfortable here. I, my leg fell asleep. Y'all ever try to get up when your leg falls asleep and you're like. But we can fall areas of our life with Christ can fall asleep. Because we might been thinking the wrong way or going the wrong way and we become numb to some things we've been messing around with. But I'm going to say this, get up out of the den. It's time. It's time. So the setting of this story, we see the introduction of the four Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Y'all know, y'all heard this. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. And I, Pastor Matt, I've never seen this before, and I thought it was very interesting because the king calls, I'll probably butcher all these names. If you can do better than me, then praise God. But it says, the king spake, Daniel 1.3, the king spake unto Ashapens, the master of the eunuchs, and he said, bring certain of the children of Israel. The children of Israel represents who? Us, the church. So the king, the enemy, is saying, bring me the church. Bring me the children of Israel. Watch this. And of the king's seed. <laughs> of the princes. The king's seed. Pastor Matt said this this morning. Faith in Christ is a seed that is placed in the heart and it germinates and it grows. But the enemy said this, bring me the church and the king's seed because that's what I'm after. I'm after the seed of faith in your heart because if I can get it to stunt its growth, then maybe you won't get free like you're supposed to be free. Maybe your family won't be free like you're supposed to be walking in power and freedom. He was going after the king seed from the beginning with Adam and Eve we see it and the word of God says this I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed we was about the seed from the beginning and it, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel Satan was doomed for destruction from the beginning but it was always about the seed. The enemy was trying to destroy Christ from being formed in your life, from you receiving the seed. And now we're talking about, though, still the church. The tactic and the job of the enemy is always to pull you and carry you away and destroy the seed in your heart and he will use things of this world to destroy that seed and choke it out and get it to not grow in your heart how do you get a plant to grow you water it spending time in God's presence water your seed fertilizing the ground with the word of God you hear me Sitting in the sun, in the presence of the sun, walking with the sun. I want my seed to grow. I want it to grow. I want to know him. Listen, the only way for us to get through any of this, y'all, is to know him. Is to know him. And Daniel knew him. 
He, but that didn't change. Now, this is what I want to show you. That didn't change the fact that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went through their own trial, and Daniel went through his own trial. So we could say, well, we're children of God. Well, we're not going to face X, Y, and Z, and we're not going to go through X, Y, and Z. They went through the fire. They went through the den. They were literally taken from their homes and made to be someone that they're not. Let me show you. He calls for them in Daniel 1.4, and they set them on a training ground. So they call for all the children of Israel that were this. Look at the ages they went for, 15 to 19. 15 to 19. That's the ages of the children of Israel. Go get them. 15 to 19. Think about that. Our children and our youth. The enemy is going after them. Why? Because they're just learning. They're just figuring it out. They're just testing the waters. They're just trying. And he said, look, go for them. But if you and me as parents and leaders in the church cover them continuously in the word of God and in prayer, then they can show up and be like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in this world. And it says they had no blemish, so they were physically attractive. They were skillful in wisdom. That means they had some type of intellect. He was going after, the enemy was going after the cream of the crop. And it says they had understanding in science, so they were gifted mentally. They had the ability to serve in the king's palace, so they were gifted with a personality that people were drawn to. And they were to learn the ways of the Chaldeans. That was not their ways. They learned the ways of their God of Israel, and these um, people were putting them through a training camp to deprogram them. The enemy is trying to deprogram us by every lie. I mean, let me, I'll tell this, and I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say it in detail. But Nia and I and my mom, and we put on this show last night. We thought it was going to be good. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it was the most horrendous thing I've ever seen in my life. And it was towards the Lord. I mean, it was blatantly disgusting and towards the Lord. And we're like, ah, stop, no more. But that's how bad it's getting. I mean, they were, I mean, it was blatant towards the Lord. You know, sometimes it's undercurrent. And no, it was directly towards God. And it was the most twisted, disgusting thing. And I was like, man, they are not holding back anymore. They're not trying to hold it back. They are speaking their doctrine through TV shows and music and school systems and all this stuff. They are speaking their doctrine. And we sit back here with our mouths closed and we're not speaking our doctrine and we're not speaking the truth of God's word I mean I'm telling you you would be appalled my spirit was appalled like I was like Lord forgive me that was the most disgusting thing I have ever seen towards you in my life and they mark it with the name of Jesus God, help us. And they're not holding back. The enemy here was not holding back from deprogramming these children of Israel, from deprogramming the church. They were trying to change them from being servants of God to being servants of Nebuchadnezzar. See, you've made a decision to serve God. And the job of the enemy is to turn your heart to go back to serving the enemy. And you are the only one that has the choice. You. My mom cannot cultivate a relationship in me with the Lord. She can do her best to set the tone, but she cannot do it for me. You have a choice in which direction you want to go and whom you are going to serve. So I thought about this. The king was putting before him their delicacies. And I'm sure it probably looked good. It was like a buffet. All these good foods. But I thought about this. If you detox from sugar, 
you learn that when you go back to eating it, it will make you sick. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to bring you back to a way of life that is going to make you sick. You've detoxed. You've been walking with Jesus. You've been going on with him. And a little bit here, oh, a little sugar here, a little sugar there, never hurt anybody. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. And all of a sudden, you're sick. And you're bound. And you're going in the wrong direction. Because we've been fooling around with X, Y, and Z. And the enemy wants to change your appetite. He wants to change your palate. See, once our palate was for all these things of the world, we went where we wanted, when we wanted, did things the way we wanted, how we wanted. We stepped on people, lied to people, did all kinds of stuff. And then the Lord changed us. And then we started going in this direction. But all of a sudden, the enemy wants to come back and dangle something before you to bring you back to your old palate, to bring you back to your old appetite, to get you to go back in the the, the same direction. And that's what was going on with the children of Israel. He was trying to get them to go to another way and serve another God, even to the point where they changed their names. Daniel's name was changed from God is judge to Belshazzar, meaning prince of Baal. Hananiah, Jehovah is gracious, was changed to Shadrach, meaning command of a coup. Michel, who was um, God is, who is God, was Meshach, meaning who is of a coup. And Azariah, meaning help of Jehovah, they changed his name to Abednego, meaning servant of Nabu. They were trying to change their very character. They were trying to change the, who God had created them to be and twist it to get them to be someone that the enemy wants you to be. That is not who God created you to be. He wants to twist everything. But you know what I love about this? God is in the name-changing business, too. And when you give your heart to him, he changes your name and writes your name in the Lamb's book of life. I can't wait to get to heaven and see Angela Schneiderman Bowles written down in the Lamb's book of life. But, I, but look, you don't think the enemy this whole time we're on this journey is going to try to get me off track? Try to change who I am? I mean, we've got a whole life ahead of us of this thing. And God is saying, no, I want you. This is a message of saying, hey, I want you to be aware. This is what's going on. This is, this is the Lord saying, this is a warning to the church. That this is what the enemy is trying to do. But I love this, and I said this already. Daniel 1.8 said, I pur- but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portions of the king's meat, nor with wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that they might not defile themselves. He placed it in his heart. He determined with unwavering faith of God. God said, don't do this. God said, do that. So I am going to do what God said. And God will bless your obedience. I have seen something recently that someone was going through, and they felt it in their heart that they knew, I'm supposed to do this. And all this came about where they were trying to be pulled in the other direction. And I said, I think you should just do what you feel like the Lord said you should do. And if you do that... God will bless you. God will bless you. And he will even use those who are trying to twist it and manipulate it to bless you. Let me tell you, they did. And they trusted 
God. And they went forward in what God told them to do. And lo and behold, the next day, that very same person came about and said, you know what? I'm just going to bless you anyway. I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm just going to see Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the midst of this kingdom that everything was against them. Hey, listen, this world is against you and everything that's in it because it goes against the grain of the word of God. But if we trust him, if we trust him and we do, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to allow that in my home. I'm not going to allow that in my church. And your kids are going to get mad. <laughs> they're going to get mad because they're not going to understand. Why can't I go? Why can't I do? Why? Because the word of God says this. <laughs> and the word of God says that. And you instill it in them. And let me tell you, God will bless your home. He will bless your workplace. Don't go with those who are going against God in your workplace. Don't go with those who are friends that are not going in a righteous direction. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel, they linked arms. They, look, there was way more than them that were called out and pu being pulled on, but they say, look, I don't know what they're going to do, but we're going to go. That's what we should be like. Micah, I don't know what they're going to do, girl, but we're going to go. Now, I don't know what they're going to do, but we're going to go. Hannah, I don't know what they're going to do, but we're going to go. You, That's the body of Christ, y'all. That's what we should be doing, Yvette. I don't know what they're going to do, but we're going to go. We go in with Jesus because we have made a determination in our heart that he is the way and he is the truth and he is the life. And he has revealed himself to me and he has proven himself as God and he will prove himself as God again. I will not be changed by the things of this world. I will not be indoctrinated another way. And people are going to say, well, y'all are a cult. They will say all kinds of stuff. Y'all indoctrinated. Yeah, I am. <laughs> of the word of God. <laughs> of the truth of God's word. <laughs> of the way I'm supposed to go. And Daniel, he put unwavering faith. And he basically got to a point where he said, if I lose my life, I'm going to trust him. If I lose my life, look, when you serve God, you're going to lose your life. And I don't mean that in the physical. I mean that in the spirit. You're going to lose who you were. And it's going to be a death. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel letting go of some things. But they ain't healthy for you. They're not beneficial for you. He's going to say, look, all right, we've been working on this area. We've been doing good here. Now we're going to go over here. Deal with that attitude. <laughs> Deal with the fact that you're late to work every day. Uh oh, that's me. I'm, I'm horrible at it. Lord, help me, please. But that's a testimony. Like, God, change me. Change my heart. Change my attitude. Change me. It's not your friend. It's not your spouse. It's not your, your boss. It's, it's not. It's not the pastor. It is you. Look in the mirror and say, change me. And look, that's going to set you free. That's going to set you free. When I look at me, stop looking at everybody else. It literally takes a focus between me and God. Here we are, God. Here we are. God, deal with me. God, help me. I purposed in my heart. I'm not turning back. What is it that you want to change in me? And you will find favor with God. Favor of God will be upon your life. Let me tell you, Daniel got put in a position with the king, like second in command with the king. He was a, a child of God, and there's this heathen king, and he gets placed second in command. And while he's getting placed second in command, Nebuchadnezzar is raising up this statue for everybody to bow. And he starts playing harps and musics, and he says, Shelby, you got to bow or you're going in the furnace. Mike, you got to bow or you're going in the furnace. 
Vince, you got to bow or you're going in the furnace. Like, I don't know about you, but if you, were, if you were placed between life and death, I don't know about how you would feel. Okay? And then they're playing this, and he wants them. The world wants you to bow down to their ways. The school systems want our children to bow down to our ways. I'm sorry. I know you probably keep hearing this because I know Pastor Matt is preaching it. But, I mean, we can't even figure out what bathroom to go into, y'all. That's a problem. Like, the world wants us to bow down to their ways. And they want us to be, keep our mouths shut. They don't want us to speak out, but they can speak out and, and testify on the streets and put up signs and all kinds of stuff. But they want to ch ch shut the mouth of the church because there is power in the mouth of the church when you speak truth. And when you live truth. See, thou servest continually your God. Meaning that word serve meant worship. I am worshiping my God with my life. That does not mean you walk around your job on the roof at peak roofing. Shut da 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 You might though. You might though. That'd be good too. <laughs> But let me tell you something. Look, I'll tell you a story. Hopefully I don't get in trouble by the funeral home for this. But we had someone die. It's at a funeral home, y'all. And the wife came in, and she was strung out on meth. And she came up to my desk, and I'm, like, the only one sitting there. And it was, like, out of nowhere. Like, she just popped up. And I was, like, and she slams her hand on my desk. And she said, I want to see my husband. Someone killed him. Someone killed And I'm like, ma'am, I don't know. But, I mean, I could see. I mean, I think that they do have the body. They're preparing him. I work in a funeral home, side job. And, and she goes, I want to see him now. I said, ma'am, they're preparing him, meaning they're embalming him. Like, you can't go back there. And she's like, I want to, and I said, okay, ma'am. And I stepped back and I looked at her. And look, I used to be a drug addict, so I know what it all looks like. And I was like, this woman is flying off the handles. What do I do? And I stepped back, and here comes another, another funeral director, and he starts talking to her. And I stepped back, and I'm under my breath. Shut that up, oh, she did it. I'm like, this is spiritual. This is spiritual. This is a spirit. <laughs> this is a spirit in this house right now. And look, I felt bad for her. She's mourning her husband. She's going through this. There's a family feud going on. It's a big old disaster. Y'all want to see some drama work in a funeral home. Everybody mad. Everybody want money. And everybody's mad at the next person. They dead, y'all. And y'all fighting. God help us. Anyway, so we're sitting there, and I'm, I'm talking about worshiping with your life, with your lifestyle. Look, I don't even care. I'm back there speaking in tongues. They got no idea what's going on whatsoever. But there was a spirit that walked in the door that was not welcome in the funeral home. And I was telling it to get out in Jesus' name because I didn't want to see nobody hurt, nobody, because they were, they were about to go, the sister and the, and the wife. And I was like, I didn't want my guys getting in the way because then the jersey was going to have to come out and I was going to have to help them out. And then I didn't want us to get sued. So all this stuff was going on because the funeral home makes money. So they're going to come for the money. So I was like, oh, Lord. So I'm back there worshiping with my life. Look, you see you're, you're, something going on in the home, something going on in the workplace. You don't have to be on your knees and on your face in order to speak to God. <laughs> you can speak to him right here. Oh, God, you see it. God, you see it. God, you see that person that's crooked on the job? Reveal it. God, you see You see what's going on? Reveal it. God, you see what's going on in, in my family and in my home? God, I pray you break through. You start worshiping with your prayer life and with your life, and you're going to see God move. You're going to see God move. And that's what Daniel did. And I want to say this. He was, the, the um, Nebuchadnezzar was erecting a statue to try to get them all bowed down. And Naya goes, where was Daniel? Y'all ever think about that? Think about that. We were like, what happened to Daniel? Pastor Matt and I were talking, and he was already in a position 
So he was probably nowhere in the vicinity where there was a test going on, but his friends were under attack. See, in the church house, you see so-and-so and and such-and-such, and and we we tend to be like, did you see what happened with so-and-so? And And we sow all this discord instead of saying, come here, come here, Micah, Let's, let's pray. Let's pray for so-and-so because they, the, the statue is erected and the enemy is trying to get them to bow down. Let me tell you this. Nye and I were talking about this the other day. Your words have power. And when you speak death over someone, that can happen. You hear what I'm saying? When you're in the background, when I'm in the background, we're all guilty of it. And if you say you're not guilty of it, it's a lie. But when we're in the background saying, oh, my God, he was on his face at the altar on Sunday. But did you see where he was at in the next day? You know he's never going to get out of that. There is power in that. Instead of you saying, you know what? I declare over them that they will be free. In the name of Jesus, that they will not bow. In the name of Jesus, I pick up. They might be weak right now, but I pick up my authority in the name of Jesus. And I will commit to my God that I am fighting on their behalf because they are a soul. And that is a family. And I'm going to stand in the gap for them. I can only imagine if Daniel was over here serving in the king's court and that's what he was called to do and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego were standing right there and they were standing up tall and they're like, we're not going to bow. We're not going to bow. Daniel was an intercessor. I believe that Daniel was probably standing in the background somewhere praying on their behalf. Oh, they're not going to bow down. They're not going to go that way because you know what? We were trained in a certain way and we stood the test of time then. We didn't eat of the king's delicacies then. God was faithful to give us favor then. He's faithful to give us favor now. And you know what? They were thrown in the fire. That was 47 years before the den. Look, this this journey is long, y'all. And that's why I'm showing, because God was faithful when they were 15 and 19. And he was faithful when they were thrown in the fire. And it said that they were not burnt, that the fire had no power over them. That not even a hair, I'll ponder, 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 I'll ponder. And he looked like the son of God. When God gets done with you, he is going to say, look at Hannah. There's a fourth man in the fire with her. Look at Robert. There's a fourth man in the fire. There's somebody there, and he looks like the son of God. Look at that. Look at that. And they walked out with the favor of God upon their life. Because the king said, take them out. Take them out. God has delivered them. And I want to encourage you. You need to remember what God has done. We need to remember what God has already done. He was faithful when they got called out and tried to be conformed to another way. He was faithful. Faithful when they were put in the fire. And it had no power over it. Listen, sin has no dominion over you. It has no dominion over you or your family. It has no power. We as the church get crippled because it can be so weighty and so much pressure. And the fire seven times hotter. I mean, as soon as you would walk up to it, it poof. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were delivered from the fire. They were delivered. Hallelujah. I I suggest, oh God, help us to choose this day whom we will serve. Look, when you're under a type of pressure like that, if you are lukewarm, 
if I am lukewarm in the church, we will not stand under pressure like that. There is no way to stand under that. And you know what? Though? I looked this up, and it was, I was like, wow, Lord, okay. He says, if you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Do you know what that means in the, in the uh, Greek? It's in the Greek. It means I will vomit you. Like that your walk with him tastes like vomit. And he don't want it. I, I was so convicted by that. I said, oh, God. Lord, help me not to ride the fence. Help me, God, that you have drawn a line in the sand, and I will not compromise my walk with you. Look, I'd rather be really, really on fire for God than try to, like, ride the line. Like, I'd rather be extra and get rid of all this stuff out of my life than, than, than ride the line. <laughs> because you know what? This is what I did. I went from, like, cold towards the Lord to extremely hot and zealous towards the Lord and completely crazy about the Lord. And, like, everything was a devil and everything was. And then, like, the Lord brought me into balance. There was a balance that he brought. But God helped me to never go back back and as a becoming a mature believer and allow this in and that in well I've been walking the, with the Lord 12 years now maybe I can allow that in look God does not change his mind if he told you that was unhealthy for you it was unhealthy for you it wasn't right for you then and it ain't right for you now so God I believe that God was allowing Daniel to intercede on their behalf. Because you know what? When we intercede, God prepares us for what's next. Because Daniel was going to be alone when he stood before the king and he got through in the lion's den. He wasn't going to have his buddies. He wasn't going to have his mama or his daddy or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There is going to be a trial in our lives that only you and God are going to face and you're going to go through. And we have our spouses and we have our, our family. But let me tell you something. There are things in our life that it's only you and God are going to be able to work it out. You and God are going to be able to go through because there is no human being on earth that can change your heart and change your mind. There is no human being on earth that can fill that void. There is no human being on earth that can be with you every second of every day through every trial. Only Jesus can do do that. Only Jesus can do that. So then we see the plot against Daniel. So Daniel remembered the attack against them in the beginning. You can recall back, look, learn from each other. Let's learn from each other. If I see Yvette going through a trial and she has come out victorious, Oh, Yvette, tell me how you did it, girl. <laughs> tell me how you did it. Tell me how you got through. You know what? Sometimes we could be so prideful as a church, and we put on this good big old cloak. Hallelujah. I paid my tithes. I went to prayer meeting. You see how good I look today? And then inside, you're dying. You're dying inside. Instead of saying, Miss Matilda, I know that I need you. I need you. Can you can you come here? Can you pray over me? Can you stand with me? Can you hold my hand? Can you walk with me? One thing I've learned in the church is to be vulnerable. Ain't none of us like being vulnerable. And that I don't mean tell everybody your business, okay, because we're still human. But I mean be vulnerable. Mike, I need you, brother. I need you, Manuel. Be praying for me, Jessica. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. And I need you to stand in the gap for me. And let me tell you, while you're praying for somebody else, God is doing something in your heart. While you're praying and interceding for somebody else, he's making you ready for whatever you're going through. And it said that Daniel was of excellent spirit. So 47 years later, here comes Daniel up to his trial all by himself. 
And it says that Daniel was preferred, Daniel 6, 3, Daniel was preferred above the presidents and above the princes because he had an excellent spirit in him. An excellent spirit in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. The whole realm. He was over the whole realm of the people. And excellent means very good, kind, outstanding. Do all things unto the Lord. Naya and I were talking about this the other day. What does that look like to do all things unto the Lord? When you are get up in the morning, God, I'm going to serve my family. All things unto the Lord. God, I'm going to go to work and be kind to my boss, even though he's a jerk. My boss isn't a jerk, y'all. He's really nice, actually. But I'm going to be kind no matter what. Any God, help me to do my job when I feel lazy. Help me to serve my husband and my wife and my children when I don't want to at all and ain't nothing but brats. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Help me to serve my church. Even though I feel like things should be a different way. Mm. Help me to do all things unto the Lord. God, help me to be of excellent spirit. Because you know what? Other people see it. And he, God promoted Daniel. You want a promotion in life? Be of excellent spirit. Where is that birthed? In your relationship with God. Because ain't nobody want to go to a job and be nice to a boss that is mean. That's something only God can do. Nobody wants to do right in the natural because that's not our makeup. It's the spirit of God in you. It says the spirit in him was excellent. The spirit of God in you is of excellent spirit, but only you can allow him to come out. Or you can shut him up. He ain't going to shut up, though. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost, he is persistent, and he will go and go and go and go and go and go and go. But eventually, you can, I don't want to, I'm not going to do that. I'm not forgiven. I'm not giving the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to stay bitter. I got the one up. No, you ain't. You bound. God, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me to be of excellent spirit. Help me. Because you know what? That person you forgive might just come back to the Lord or might just want to know him because of the grace you have extended. They might just want to know him because of the grace you've extended. Now, forgiveness doesn't mean go back into the situation if it's like that. So let me say that. Forgiveness sets you free and them free. But that doesn't mean you have to subject yourself to whatever that thing is. But be of excellent spirit. And he was of excellent spirit was in him. So they couldn't come against anything. They were trying to figure out how can we get Daniel off track. And that's what the enemy is doing with us. How can I get rich off track? How can I get Brennan off track? The enemy is setting up a plot and a scheme against you to get you off track track. And it said, one, that Daniel was skillful and he was steadfast. The Bible says, be skillful in the word of God. Be skillful in what you do for God. In all things, be skillful. That means that you should take serious what God has called you to do. If he called you to be a helper in the church, be skillful in it. If he called you to be a mama, be skillful in it. If he called you to be a dad, be skillful in it. If he called you to be a a, a person that stands at the door and greets people, be skillful in it. If he called you to be a prayer warrior, be skillful in it. Maybe he called you to do the words, Haley, you're doing a great job. Be skillful in it. And she's young, teaching them young. Gabby, when you go to your friend's house, Gabby be playing church, y'all, at her friend's house. People be getting filled with the Holy Ghost. She ain't playing church. Gabby having church. Be skillful in it. How old are you, Gabby? 13. Look, we should be ashamed of ourselves, adults. Gabby is going to people's houses playing church, and they getting filled with the Holy Ghost. 
We go to work and we're complaining about the neighbor next to us. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. So he was skillful in all that he did. So the enemy did this. You know what? If we can't get him, we're going to get his prayer life. Because you know what? We know he's going to pray. <laughs> we know. We coming. We coming for his prayer life. So Daniel 6, 7 says, all the presidents of the kingdom and the governors and the princes. Now, mind you, these were people of Nebuchadnezzar. Listen. And Daniel was not of the same spirit. So Daniel was set over those who were close to Nebuchadnezzar. You think that they were jealous? They had, look, jealousy causes a murderous spirit. Jealousy will murder some, someone's character in a second. I could have done better than that. Did you hear the way Naya sang this morning? She don't even play the piano, right? <laughs> That's my best friend, y'all, so don't hate on her, okay? You had to deal with me. No. But really, though, I could, I could have preached better on Revelations than that. Ooh, you better be careful. Careful when we come against God's people in jealousy because it's not the right spirit. You know, look, every church I have gone to, I have gone to for a position. And I don't mean that in a wrong way. Like, if I moved, it was for a position in a ministry. So God did it. But this last time, I married Jeff. <laughs> so I went to Mississippi to marry Jeff. <laughs> but no position in the church, okay? And I've talked to Pastor Mike about this, so I'm very clear about, um, you know, you guys know I'm straightforward. And the enemy has come in in my heart to dis try to dismantle and get me to look at the church differently because I am not operating the way I'm used to operating, but God said, Angela, can you serve? Can you serve your husband? Can you serve your stepchildren? Can you serve the other leaders? Can you be there and be a support? Because, you know, we really quickly can walk into a church and be like, well, I would have did that, and I would have did this. Pastor Matt, you missing it. And I would have did this. <laughs> and real quickly get jealous of whatever is going on. And you know what that does? That gets our focus off of what God wants to do in our hearts and what he wants to prepare us for. Because he said if you humble yourself before him, he will exalt you in due season. That's the word of God. So and he, the Bible says that Jesus came to serve and not to be served. So can we be a feet washer? What can... And I'm telling you, the Lord dealt strongly in my heart. Because, Angela, I want you to be a servant first and birthed in your servanthood. Then I can do with you what I want you to do. But everybody's platform doesn't look the same. Let me tell you, I live in that house with my husband and those children way more than I do stand behind this pulpit. And they see the life of Christ, I pray, preached every single day rather than just 45 to 2 hours in church on Sunday and Wednesday. What is, that's the platform. What is our lives preaching on the job? Because Daniel's life was of excellent spirit. What does our lives look like? And they said, you know what? We know Daniel's going to pray. Let it be so, Lord. Let us be people that when others look at us, they say, I know Jennifer is going to be praying. Morning, noon, and night. She always standing out that window, facing towards Jerusalem, praying to her God. Man, people used to make fun of me all the time for praying all the time. I don't even care. Let me tell you, I stand in that gym. I stand in that gym. Yeah, yeah we taking out the walls of the church. I stand in that gym. And anybody that says, will you pray? I said, yeah, right now. Right now, in the middle of the gym. Father, in the name of Jesus. And you know I'm not quiet. 
And you know what? I've had people literally stop and listen. And when I say amen, they're like, man, can we do that every time? I'm in the gym. We working in the spirit and on the body. We working on both. But when people, so I want that to be said about me. When, it, when, it, when my kids wake up in the morning and I'm out there, they get annoyed too. I put that worship music on and I'm like, let's go in, y'all. Breakfast time, they don't even know what they want for breakfast. They're half asleep with the blankets on. And I'm in there like, Jehovah. Yeah. Like, let's go in in the morning. Y'all need some of this before you get to school. That's it. <laughs> I probably get on everybody's nerves. But you know what? I don't care. God, let that be said about me. That I was like Daniel and towards Jerusalem morning, noon, and night. And when the enemy had comes in, he's got to come towards my relationship with God. He's trying to dismantle your relationship with God. He's trying to get you to be quiet. Because if Daniel would have shut his mouth, then he wouldn't have had to go to the lion's den and that's what the enemy will face you with if you just be quiet if you just don't go that direction then maybe people will like you maybe you'll get along with people on a job more maybe your family will enjoy you a little bit more my family is a family of God and I love my family but it's of different spirit y'all know what I'm talking about can I get a witness? Sometimes you have a different spirit, and you are to love them and be kind to them and be of excellent spirit to them. But sometimes there's just a difference. Well, there is a difference. God help us. But you know what? They the ones calling you at 2 in the morning <laughs> saying, Naya, will you touch heaven for me? Pastor Matt, will you touch heaven for me? God, I know you, I know, I know that you talk to God because I see you talking to God morning, noon, and night. Don't shut your mouth. I don't know how to pray. That's okay. Ask them. The disciples did. They said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. God, teach us how to pray. Look, Peter said, help. You don't know what to say, say help. God, help me. God, help me. Lord, I need you. God, I need you. And like, sometimes it can be an embarrassing thing. Like, I don't know what people are going to think. Well, we didn't know what people were going to think when you were out that bar. When you were wearing that outfit. No, really, you did not care. All of a sudden, we get saved, and what they going to think? What they going to think? You know why? Because we become clarity of mind and we become aware of our surroundings. But God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would have us focus like Flint. That it would not matter. Look, I love Sabrina. Sabrina, Sabrina will pray down the heavens. She will cry her little eyes out. She will shout. She skipped around the church. And I'll never forget when Gabby said, oh, every time Sabrina would do that. Sorry, Gabby. I love you, girl. But every time Sabrina would do that, Gabby will walk out the back door. <laughs> but you know what Gabby told me the last time we were together? She said, now I love when my mama does that. Like, she was like, I want that. <laughs> I want that. So you can't go based off of what you see people doing now. <laughs> it's like they get a little uncomfortable. The Holy Ghost can be a little uncomfortable. I mean, sometimes you just don't know what's going on. And that's okay. But you didn't care <laughs> when we were in the world. We did not care. When we were hemmed up on this or that and we were dancing here and going there, there at 2 in the morning, here at 2 in the morning, sometimes we can't even answer our phone because we're like, oh, it's 2 in the morning. And somebody's calling you because they need you. But yet, you could have went to X, Y, and Z at 2 in the morning, her house, his house. So I'm just saying, God. Help us to be of excellent spirit. And when people do come against us, that it would be against who we are in Christ. And God, 
If they come against that, you have all power and all authority over that in Jesus' name. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of darkness and wicked rulers of the air. It is not your children. It is not your husband. It is not your spouse. It is not those people at work. They are vessels. And the enemy will lie to you all day long. He will lie to you all day long. So I want to tell you this, God allowed Daniel to be put in the lion's den. Maybe you find yourself in that position today. Maybe you have found God faithful time and time again, but somehow you found yourself in this position. God, I'm in this den of lions, of lies, of roar, I mean roaring, <laughs> roaring lions. I hear lies against my family. I hear lies against my home. I hear lies against who, like the enemy will get you, try to get you to believe that you're still who you were. And that's a lie. That is a lie. Let me tell you this again. That is a lie. We have tendencies that we might end up falling, but you are not who you were. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. They are dead. They are under the blood. Yesterday is gone. Today is new. You find yourself in a den of lions. And God said, I will send my angels to have charge over you. Laura, Laura, you were in a den of lions with that baby. And she had to go to court, and she had no clue. She had no clue what was going to happen, and it looked like everything was stacked against her. Everything. Den of lions. They coming for her. And we prayed down to heavens that day in that room. I felt the spirit of God all over it. We prayed. <laughs> we were praying. We were standing in the gap for that baby. And all of a sudden, she calls me like a month ago while we were down here, and she says, I won. I won. I won custody. I won custody. Because you know why? She was obedient to God. And even though you, it looks like everything is stacked against you, she said, I will choose to serve God and God alone. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how it feels. It doesn't matter. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to determine in my heart. She showed up day after day at the church. Every time the doors open, I seen that woman come in this church house and worship her God when everything was stacked against her. And when she walked in to the courtroom, the Lord turned things in her favor because she, he knew she would raise him in the Lord. That's what the Lord is after. Those who will stand in the gap for their families. So this is what happened. He was thrown in the lion's den. And, you know, the king actually loved Daniel. Those that see the spirit of God upon you can't deny it. They can't deny it. They might not even understand it. But he wasn't bashful about his God. He wasn't bashful about his relationship. So when the king and Daniel had corresponding. The king knew this is Daniel's God who he serves continuously. So he, when he went to put him, because the law said, the law said if they don't eat, or no, I'm sorry, it's the law he wrote said that if they pray to another God or they serve another God in 30 days, they will be placed into the lion's den. You know what Daniel did? I love this. Daniel said, I heard the law. I'm going to God. That's what happens in a trial, though. That's what we should do. I, I see the enemy, but I'm going to fall on my face before my God. The posture of his heart was, I know that this is happening, but I am going to fall on my face before my God. And the trial might get worse. You would think at that moment maybe God would have came and delivered him then and changed the king's heart and changed the law and this and that and that. and Because you know how we think. We think one time before the Lord, poof. He's not a genie, y'all. He's cultivating relationship. He wants you to come and come 
and come to him. And he said, and he goes before his God and he prays and they take him and they throw him in the lion's den. And I can only imagine the roaring that was in his ears and the hostility and the intimidation of the lions surrounding him. Have you ever felt like that? Oh, this hostile, it's a hostile spirit. It's a hostile spirit that's come against me and my family. This situation never ends. I wake up with this battle every single day. I'm having a battle in my mind. I'm having torment and hindrances in my life. I, my heart isn't changing. My attitude isn't changing. I'm seeing this thing in my family every single day. This thing has a hold on me. The lions are roaring and roaring and roaring and says that Daniel believed his God. Look, I don't, it does, scripture doesn't say that he was praying in the den, but Daniel was a praying man. So I can only think and come to that Daniel was probably declaring the word of God. See, the circumstance did not change. He got put in the den. The enemy tried to stop his prayer life here, and he's going to try to stop it here. But it, when it gets worse, you begin to declare the word of God over your life. Lord, you said, if I believe you, you will do it. God, you said that you will deliver my loved ones. You said you will deliver my wife and my children. You said you would deliver me and provide a new job. You said that you would. I'm in financial ruin. God, you said that you would provide. My body needs healing, and you said that you are the healer. My family needs restoration. I mean, you declare declare it in the face of the lion you declare it in the face of your problem you declare it as it gets worse and you say you kept me when I was taken by the enemy and you delivered me you delivered Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and you were the same God yesterday today and forever look you can declare the word of God over your life like I I'm like God, you delivered Moses. I stand on those truths. You can stand on things you've seen in other people's lives. Like, God, I've seen what you did in Micah's life. You can do it for me. But you can also go in the word and say, God, you did it for Moses. God, you did it for Noah. God, you did it for Aaron. God, you did it. You did it for Jacob. God, you did it for them. You can do it for me. See, when the enemy tries to take that away from you, he's taking the power that God has given you. But that seed, he's trying to take the seed. He's trying to steal the seed. And we're not going to let him have the king's seed. Because the seed has been placed in your heart. And it's to grow and grow and grow and grow. So then all of a sudden you see the king come down and say, Daniel! Servant of the living God, the living God, even the enemy. <laughs> it's the servant of the living God. I know your God is alive. I have seen it in your life. There are some people that I know that are not saved, that cannot deny the power of God in my life. Cannot, they can't deny that I was on the street shooting heroin one day and saved and set free and kept for 12 years the next. Like, you can't deny that. You can't deny that. And I'm not bashful about who did it. Just like Daniel wasn't bashful about who did it. So when the king comes, he's like, I've been watching you serve the living God. Has he delivered you? Has he delivered you, Daniel? I mean, it was so bad that the king couldn't even sleep. The Lord will allow your enemies to not even sleep because he's trying to get a hold of their hearts. He couldn't even eat. He couldn't do anything. Oh, God, that those that we love, let them be so at unrest that they would cry out to you and that they would know you too. And if we ever fall into a place where we are going in the wrong direction, God, let us never be at rest until we are going in the right direction. And he didn't even let him. He didn't let him sleep, and he runs out to see if he's alive. And he says, was he able to deliver you from the lions? And Daniel says, O king, live forever. My God has sent angels. Naya, if you would come up. My God has sent angels. 
and has shut the mouth of the lions, and they have not hurt me. For as much as my innocency was before them, O king, have I done no hurt. So I want to say this, if y'all would all stand with me. God isn't looking for you to be perfect. He's not looking for you to have it all together because we'll never have it all together until the day of his coming. But he is looking for a heart and an attitude of service. And I feel like the Lord wants us as his body to recommit to him. Lord, I want to purpose in my heart like Daniel did, that I am committed to you. Though I be not perfect and haven't done any, everything perfect, you are not looking for a perfect heart. You are looking for a heart that is continuously worshiping you. And y'all, repentance is worship. When you repent and you ask the Lord to forgive you, it's an act of worship saying, God, I believe you. And if you want to declare over your life, God, you have been faithful. And you have been faithful time and time again. I've seen it in the beginning. I've seen it in the fire. Lord, and now I'm in the den, and I need you to bring me up and out. I need you to shut the mouth of the enemy and the doubt and the fear and everything that has been plaguing me and the lies the, the enemy has been telling me, and I need you to deliver me. God, I commit to you today. God, deliver me. Deliver my family. If it's not you, stand in the gap for your family. God, deliver my family from the den. Deliver my family from the lies. And help me not bow down to any other God or any other way or any other thing. Lord, I need you to deliver me.